Moving on from that one, over the weekend, I went to E1, obviously, to go see um, Freddie K, Devious One, and the Lady Machine was also playing, but mostly to see those two guys. And when I was at E1, I was reminded of just how annoying it is to kind of club in the UK in terms of before you actually enter inside of the club. Number one, the fucking barricades, right? You have to kind of wiggle around barricades and go around the long way and shit. Then when you get there, there's like a hundred million security guards like just staring at you. And if you're tripping your balls off or if you're high or if you're just drunk, it can be a little bit unnerving that all those people are looking at you because it feels as if they all know what you're doing. Right? They were looking in your soul. They can look in your pockets. They can look in your pouches, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, that's what basically you kind of feel like. And then the other thing that was really disturbing that kind of threw me off which I'd noticed a lot, but I guess because I went there sober this time and I had only a couple of drinks when I went in there, but on the way there, I was completely sober, which is rare because I usually always have a bit of a pre-drink. So I was completely aware of my surroundings. And obviously I had, I was on my bike, so I was completely aware because the wind was blowing in my face. I was just loving life. They have this thing in our country where they essentially take your ID as entry, of course, to check your age and shit. They scan it for a system and they also take a picture of you to put into this internal system that they supposedly pass around to other clubs so the idea around it is that they can then pass your images or your contact deals to other clubs so if you've been banned in one place or you've caught some ruckus in one place they can kind of note that in your file and then pass it around to other clubs so that you can be so they can keep the club safe it's kind of that's what it's basically sold as right that's the kind of premise around it but it is incredibly intrusive and incredibly um unnecessary i think as well especially for the nightclubs and the places that i go to it just doesn't make any sense like you already got my id you already checked it which is already enough which is already a lot as it is and then now you want to take a picture of me and put it on your internal database that i have no idea where that stuff is going to and then allegedly share it to other people which i've not consented to either it's really really strange i have no idea why this is a thing and i have no idea why it was kind of passed as a law and people don't really bat an eyelid about it. and i guess because it's one of those things it's like um airports and airlines they get away with bloody murder because we have no other option but to use them so every time people complain about oh this service they lost my baggage the thing was delayed they wouldn't give me a refund you're gonna be back again anyway because especially if you're flying on a budget airline that's the only thing you can afford it's the only airline that goes where you want to go to on a reg on a semi-regular basis you've got no other options really do you know what i mean you can you have to basically stick with it and i feel like clubs kind of get away with the same sort of thing there's no other place you can go late at night to go and party get high and, and maybe potentially hook up with somebody and have a dance and listen to somebody play so they basically get away with murder because you've got nowhere else to go and it's really really annoying and i found this old article from 2014 courtesy of vice that speaks on it a little bit it says are uk nightclubs breaking data laws by storing your id and fingerprints it says as follows say i don't like the look of you if i scanned your id i could ban you not only from my club but by sharing the data for, for from every nightclub in london how the fuck is that not illegal how are there not data protection issues with that alex proud the owner of proud london proud candor sorry has a reputation for being a bit of an opinionated and gobby but this is issue but this issue and the harvesting of the personal data from clubbers, which is increasingly becoming mandatory for late night venues has him firing words out with furious and spitfire precision there was moments when everyone like was like when everyone when everyone likes to have a bit of power he says but i'm not here to police society i run a nightclub it's ludicrous that i'd be given that sort of power and society doesn't want me to have it exactly alongside cctv and hefty security teams proud luck camden like many other clubs across the uk have been required to install id scanning equipment allowing bouncers to check for age ensure no undesirables are admitted entry sold to us in the name of easier access in some venue you can now expect to be fingerprinted to the full airport immigration experience and the thing that i have an issue with is that my id that i use which is a provisional driving license i guess is too new for the system so every time i go to a club they basically have to input and scan my deals in as a new person so i basically have to get taken a picture of myself all the time whereas most people i guess you get scanned it gets saved in the system and you just go through but every time i go to a nightclub i get a picture taken every single time and say happens with my passport because my passport is too old so they can't scan it but then my new passport my new id thing is too new so it doesn't recognize on the system it's really annoying because every time i go i'm like you know it's like a little it's a it's like a buzz kill and it kind of knocks you out of your kind of rhythm because you're having to like stand there and then take a picture it's like what the fuck's going on here absolutely madness especially when you go to nightclubs where they have a policy of no pictures allowed but then they take a picture of you outside it's fucking bizarre
Anyway, it continues. As it says here, but a buzz killing aside, this shouldn't be shrugged off. Why the hell do they, we go out in the first place if not to escape the rules and the constraints of daily life? There is a serious implications to amassing yet more private data. We should be asking questions. Who agreed that clubs and private technology firms should be allowed to collect all this information about where we are, where we, uh, where we hang out at night? The UK's biggest provider of ID scanning equipment for clubs and bars, ID Scan Biometrics Limited, claims to have the largest private ID library in the world, and its database includes passports, visas, ID cards, driving licenses, utility bills, and work permits. The system can check NHS numbers, electoral roll, telephone numbers, national insurance numbers, sanction lists, and politically exposed persons list. That is insane. That is some black ops, flipping secret state um, sort of shit in it. That is literally insane. By joining Safer Club and Nightclub Association, sorry, Nightclub Network, but clubs and bars can share data with others, with each other. Should you be banned from one club, the bouncer can spread your details across the network and the party is over for you at every venue in town. Some venues use different scanning systems, so if you go out a lot, your details may have been uploaded to several different databases. How nuts is that? Not only does it not scan stuff that's new or that's too old, it also doesn't actually share databases on the machines aren't new enough to actually share them around to different places. So you're having your details stored in different locations with different people, not knowing anything about it how you can get it deleted and stuff it's just absolute nightmare despite having more than 5,000 of its scanning machines in deployment when i call id scan biometrics limited i'm told it's only a small company and there is no one who can speak to me my subsequent emails to the company's operation manager are ignored local licensing officers who have almost invariably been behind this um, arrival of the system are more willing to vouch for success it's a scheme with which the police work closely requesting crime related data gathered by the clubs and in return feeding back information on offenders in six months following the implement implementation of scannet in watford last year violence was down 14 percent and faced by 57 percent according to the council however no dependent independent national assessment has been carried out don't get me wrong i'm sure similar to like you know i've worked in retail and, and most of you guys are aware that of the retail little trick where they'll tell you if you work in retail to stand next to the door or stand next to the security gate thing where people when you walk through a new skate goes did and usually when you're doing that for the first time you usually think what's the point if you've got a gate here that makes a sound why should i need to stand here you know i mean you're gonna hear that someone stole something you can go and then attend to it then but the idea behind it is that if you stand next to the gate or stand next to the door sorry or whatever of your store and you greet everybody that's coming in it kind of puts would be um shoplifters off because the whole idea of shoplifting is they don't want to be seen especially the conventional way you know there's some hardcore guys that actually steal and rack for real who enjoy being seen and kind of you know want to play that game and basically do it under your nose but most shoplifters want to not be seen and kind of go in and go out without being noticed and kind of slip away with all your product so if you say hi it kind of works it kind of puts people off so i'm assuming these scanning machines and these com cameras and shit do the same thing they kind of put a little bit of a mental barrier in your head they kind of you know make you um uh, think twice about whether or not it's a good idea to go in there and pickpocket or to spike someone or to get into a fight or something do you know what I mean so maybe that's the case best practice for the use of ID scanning equipment has been to lay down by the information commissioner's office ICO and includes the recommendation that the data be deleted after a suitable period of time yeah right like the data protection act requires that information is kept for no longer than absolutely necessary however club owners I speak to were hazy about the requirement some told me that data sits there forever others thought it was six months three years one said it keeps as much information as possible indefinitely some told me they were storing the data themselves others it's saved encrypted on the service and companies like id scan given that many of the venues use different data marketing propositions it's obvious that some of our information will be kept long term so absolutely heinous and crazy situation to be in and just another reminder of how great and shitty it is to flip in go out in london like we have one of the best clubbing scenes out there honestly i've said it many many times on here and to my friends in public or to anyone i speak to i think in london we have or the uk specifically we have one of the best clubbing scenes because we have every genre covered if you're into new metal if you're into punk if you're into um jazz if you're into house if you're into disco music there's going to be a specific night out there on catered specifically for your taste playing like out there that you can go to the tent sorry dj spinning that music that you want to hear garage dub bass jungle whatever you'll hear it all night long in the nightclub it's absolutely fantastic right absolutely fantastic scar whatever you want to hear but on the other side of it 
it's so draconian in terms of the times you can go in, in terms of the times of closing, in terms of the searching, in terms of the IDs. All this stuff is just so draconian and really annoying that it's kind of hard to like go to kind of leave your house in one mood and go in in the same mood you kind of it always kind of buzz kills you because they kind of knock you off your vibe by just being aggressive and being all over you it's just annoying i really hate it sometimes but you kind of have to put up with it and i guess for the most part it does make you appreciative when you do then go out to other countries such as berlin which i'm obviously eager and happy to go to um when you see it done the right way it does make you really appreciative of it when you do see it done that way to be honest you don't go out there with a sort of like over it sort of thing you don't go out there with an entitled sort of thing you got to kind of appreciating every bit of it and wanting to kind of soak yourself in it and immerse yourself in it and really take advantage of every minute you're out there because you know you're not going to get that sort of liberty and freedom when you go back home so maybe it's a good thing maybe it's a good thing